Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and thank you for tuning in to another video. So as you can probably tell if you're just looking behind me or if you've watched any of my hauls before, it doesn't take a lot to convince me to buy a Marvel Omnibus. And I've already done a list of the top 15 most wanted DC Omnibuses that I'd like to get published, so now it's time to take a look at the biggest competitor that they have. And if you weren't excited already, I'm not just doing a top 10, I'm not just doing a top 15, I am doing a top 20 most wanted Marvel Omnibuses that I would gladly buy on day one. So I can tell you're already excited, probably so excited that you've already clicked that like button or maybe you should take a break to do it now but regardless let's just get into the list starting at number 20 and i've got a what if omnibus now because of my accent i really have to pronounce the t in what so it's a what if omnibus if anybody who doesn't know what if is the comic imprint that marvel has that often takes a look at the marvel universe but takes a slightly different turn and over the years there's been some great storylines such as what if punisher had actually killed daredevil what if spider-man had joined the fantastic four what if uncle ben had survived and aunt may had died in instead? What if the Hulk was around for Civil War? And other stories that take an element from the Marvel comic universe and just sort of twist it on its head slightly and give you an interesting tale. I've read the first complete collection that they recently released and I'd just like a complete run of what if. If they didn't just want to do it in volumes 1, 2, 3 and so on, they could just do it so that they do it individual for each character. So obviously over the years there's been a ton of what if X-Men stories, there's been a ton of what if Spider-Man stories. They could just group them together but I always feel like this is a great example of an anthology series that just seems to work. So if the question is, what if Marvel publishes a what if omnibus, the answer is that I'm going to buy it on day one. Number 19, I've got Captain Britain and MI13. Yeah, this is getting some kind of preferential treatment because it's my home country that's being represented here. And admittedly, this series is only 15 issues long, but it's one of those that I read as it was coming out because that was at the time when I was slowly starting to get into single issue comics. And I heard iFanboy talk about it, so I'd been reading it here, there and various issues, but I've never actually read this full series. What I have read, I really enjoyed, and I've heard it still gets some acclaim even now even though it's been about 10 years since it finished and I think with the announcement of an Excalibur omnibus it'd make perfect sense to follow that up with Captain Britain in his own individual series. It's written by Paul Cornell as well so you've got a very underrated British writer there and I always just find it funny that this series that I've really enjoyed in the past emerged as part of a spin-off of the Secret Invasion storyline. Secret Invasion's already been given an omnibus even though nobody asked for it so why not just follow it up with the only tie-in that seems to have any relevance today. Number 18 and my cheating's gonna start early on this one, I've just got more Ultimate Marvel Omnibuses. I know this is going to be one that a lot of people won't agree with me on, but that's fine because this is my personal list. But for myself, the Ultimate Marvel Universe was my way of branching into comics initially. If you haven't already watched my How I Got Into Comics, Ultimate Spider-Man was actually the first book that I ever brought. And from there, I branched out and I brought Ultimate X-Men, I brought Ultimate Fantastic Four, I brought Ultimate Galactus. I even brought a lot of the spin-offs such as Ultimate Iron Man, Ultimate Hulk vs Wolverine. I even brought Ultimate Daredevil and Ultimate Daredevil and Electric because the vast majority of this I did actually enjoy and I've got a lot of nostalgia for it because it was the storylines that I was first reading. If you were a similar age to me, if you're in your 20s, your 30s, this might have been your gateway into comics. And just because some of the people who've been into comics for longer than that don't enjoy it, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't sell well. As well, Marvel's been quite weird with how they've handled the Ultimate Marvel Universe in omnibus format already. So we've got stuff like the Ultimates, we've got Ultimate Comics Avengers, which I'm not sure who wanted that. You've got the Ultimate Spider-Man Miles Morales Saga and you've got a volume one of the normal Ultimate Spider-Man but after that it does seem like it got forgotten so I'd like to see a reprint of Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1 and then to just continue with it because I do think there is some examples of great storytelling that have been buried amongst what most people see when they think about the Ultimate Universe and as well you recently reprinted the Ultimate you can't tease us like this and not follow it up with anything. Number 17 I've got The Avengers by Jeff Johns so take another drink but The Avengers are possibly one of the biggest names in comics at the moment Jeff Johns is possibly one of the biggest writers in comics at the moment but this run that he did in the early 2000s just seems to be completely forgotten about. I'm not even sure if there's enough issues here to really warrant an omnibus, but I just think it's weird that this series from such a high profile writer with such a high profile team just doesn't seem to exist in an easy to find format. There were complete collections, but they seem to be going out of print. And I remember when it was like the 2010s, I had like a newsletter from Forbidden Planet and they said that they were releasing like the first hardcover of the Avengers by Jeff Johns run. I think it was called Red Zone or something like that. You really test to my memory at this point. I remember being intrigued by it, but at that point, I think the only Jeff Johns thing that I'd read had been Green Lantern Rebirth, so he wasn't really one of those writers that was really on my territory at the moment. It was when I was still quite new to comics, so you know, just give me a break there. But now that I'm a bit older and I've enjoyed a lot of his work that I've read, I think it'd just be great if I could have his run on Avengers, just to see if he handles the Marvel Universe as well as he does the DC Universe. Number 16, I've got X-Men by Kieran Gillen. This is just fun X-Men to me. I like everything about it. I like Magneto's involvement in it when he was part of the 
the X-Men and how that just caused conflict with the wider world and how they then viewed the X-Men as a result. Even though I find it quite funny because the X-Men are always just bringing bad guys onto the team and no one ever gives the X-Men any credit anyway, so why would it really matter if the public has a negative reception to them? But when you think about modern X-Men runs, especially from the 2000s onwards, there haven't been that many that have been collected in Omnibus. But I think it's clear that X-Men Omnibuses are quite popular, especially with the reprints of Uncanny that are coming out and the reprints of the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont era. So why not follow up that hype that people have got for the X-Men, this sort of like renewed love for the team, why not follow it up with one of the more recent runs? And if you had to ask me which one of those recent runs I'd want to get in Omnibus, of course it's going to be Kevin Gillen. Number 15, and this is where the hate intensifies, I've got Siege. Now I have a long and storied history with this book right here, which is a Thor by J. Michael Straczynski Omnibus. I'm not going to get into the full story here, but I let that book go so that I could afford to pay for driving lessons. But realistically, the ending isn't fully there because the ending of this run is actually in Siege. Now Siege is only a four issue miniseries, so the way that I'd make this an Omnibus is by including those Thor issues that came just before it that were also written by Kieran Gillen, if I remember correctly. There we can have like a complete run up to Siege in a similar way that they've done with the Secret Invasion Omnibus, which again, I'm just not sure who asked for that Omnibus. But Siege was one of those events that was coming out whilst I was starting to get into single issue comics. Avengers vs X-Men was one of the first actual events that I read issue to issue, but I do have that revenance for Siege and I sort of want it in an Omnibus just so I can finally complete this story that I've wanted for so long. And then I also think it'll help branch into an eventual Jason Aaron Omnibus. Number 14, I've got Daredevil by Charles Soule. Fair warning, get ready to hear the name Daredevil a few times on this list. But look behind me, I love Daredevil. He's my guy. He was one of the first superheroes that really got me into comics. And now that I actually think about it, he was actually the first mainstream 616 universe Marvel character that I actually read. But we've already got so many great runs of Daredevil in Omnibus format. So we've got Frank Miller's, we've got Brian Michael Bendis's, we've got Ed Brubaker, we've got Mark Wade. We've even got a Shadowland Omnibus. And the thing that follows after that is Charles Soule's run. Now I haven't heard too much about this. It is mainly just so that I can continue my Daredevil collection, but I would just want this so that I can feel like Daredevil's getting a bit more love again. And because it's following on from Mark Wade's run, I've heard that it's kind of like a midpoint between sort of not being as dark as Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker or Frank Miller, but taking it away from sort of the happy-go-lucky attitude of the Mark Wade run. And that's something that I'd like because Daredevil can often just be too miserable. And the Mark Wade run was enjoyable, but it didn't really feel like peak Daredevil at any point. It sounds like Soul's run might be a perfect balance between that, so in that case, if you print it, I'll buy it. Number 13, I've got Punisher by Matt Fraction. Matt Fraction's very hit and miss with me. I feel like I either really enjoy his story or I just don't enjoy it at all. However, the Punisher's one of those characters that in my eyes just can't do any wrong. Even when he was like possessed by a mythical demon, I even kind of enjoyed that as well. But I've got pretty much every Punisher omnibus that's ever been printed because I just really enjoy the street level characters within the Marvel Universe. And the Punisher and Daredevil are definitely my favourite ones. I like the Punisher's moral ethics, I like the way that he is kind of twisted in the Marvel comics and compared to the Netflix show. And I did actually read the first complete collection of War Journal, but then it seemed like they just weren't continuing on with that. And trust me, we're going to get into that a little bit later on in this video. But from what I read, I really enjoyed and I think the Punisher, now that he doesn't have his Netflix show, it seems like he's been forgotten about. There's some great Punisher runs that haven't really been given any love over the years, and I'm going to talk about another one later on in the list. But I think we need to see the Punisher again in an oversized hardcover, and the best way to do that is going to be by Matt Fraction's run. Number 12, I've got Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky. Full disclosure, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, so just put him on the list of names that I can't pronounce. But this is probably the most recent run that's going to make it onto the list, and I've heard nothing but praise about Chip Zdarsky's run. Now, as you know, I don't really buy a lot of single issues. I'm mainly completely collected editions. So for me, I've heard people ranking this as third when it comes to Daredevil runs underneath like Frank Miller and Brian Michael Bendis. Considering other runs that I've read over the years and that I've enjoyed as well, it's kind of great to me that I hear that there is a modern run that isn't just treading water, that isn't just doing the same thing that has been done before, and is also enjoyable. So in that case, why not put it in an omnibus so that I can read it? Because this has come out in the era of Marvel where they tend to publish trade paperbacks in like four issue books. Not for me, not a fan of it, just give me a thick omnibus. Number 11, I've got Heroes for Hire. Now I literally just said this, I love street level Marvel heroes. But the only real thing that we've got from anybody that isn't Daredevil or Punisher seems to be that one map fraction Iron Fist omnibus that's long out of print and it doesn't look like there's enough buzz around it to get a reprint. But Marvel have started doing omnibuses where they just tend to spotlight a character's early career. 
so they've done it with Punisher, they've done it with Morbius, and Moon Knight's one that's going to get one later this year, and there's probably others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but the one that I wanted them to do was Heroes for Hire. I love Luke Cage, I love Iron Fist, and I love when more people come onto the team as well. It would be great if they could do like the Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning storyline that they did a few years ago, but don't really know if there's enough issues there to warrant an omnibus. But then again, we had like a devil dinosaur omnibus and a Secret Wars omnibus, so realistically they can just put that logo on whatever they want. But considering that they had Netflix shows that even though the quality wasn't consistent throughout, did actually do quite well in terms of viewership, it's kind of criminal that they haven't given us anything from either of these characters in the last 10 years. Number 10, and he's back already, it's Punisher by Greg Rucker. I'm not going to labour over the points that I literally just said about the previous Punisher book, but I also think Greg Rucker's run, which is much better than the Matt Fraction run, deserves to get that omnibus treatment. Sure, yeah, it is a much skinnier run, but I was introduced to this through the Mark Wade crossover, so there was an issue where Punisher, Spider-Man and Daredevil all crossed over within their individual issues. I remember reading this when I had the oversized hardcovers, and then I jumped into Greg Rucker's Punisher run from that, and I really enjoyed this. If I remember correctly, this might have actually been the first Punisher run that I actually read. So again, maybe it's me just getting sentimental, maybe it's me just having nostalgia, but I remember this series being great, and I'd really like to revisit it now that I'm older, and now that I've read a lot of other Punisher books. And also, Greg Rucker's one of those writers that is very underrated in my eyes. He had a great run on Wonder Woman, he had an impeccable job on Gotham Central, he did great during 52. Actually, his run on Wolverine was really good as well, but he just doesn't seem to be held in that upper echelon of writers. He's very underrated in my eyes, and I think that he deserves a bit more love, he deserves a bit more praise, so give him one of his best series in the Omnibus treatment. Now, we're cracking into the final digits, and it's getting intense, but before we break into it, just please remember, if you haven't done so already, can you just click that subscribe button and become a part of the Dog Pound, and click that bell notification because it does really help the channel, and if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a like, and just for fun, comment below what you think my number one pick's gonna be. Don't cheat because I'll know. Now, number nine, I've got Spider-Man The Gauntlet. I know this is one that a lot of people might disagree with me on, but again, this is mainly for nostalgia. When I was going to the comic shop, The Gauntlet was all the rage. Do you know these sort of little promo cards that comic shops always give you that everybody just uses as a cheap bookmark? I remember having about three of these for Spider-Man The Gauntlet, but these were my first couple of issues getting into like mainstream Spider-Man comics, and I loved it. It was just great. It's pretty much the Running Man with Spider-Man in it. Which if you watch the Running Man film, the one thing that you'll think is this would be better if it did have Spider-Man in it. But this came out at such a frantic pace and I think that it was coming out like one issue a week at one point. And I wasn't going to the comic shop enough and I didn't really have a pull list at the time, so I just read this in bits and pieces. It's pretty much a who's who of Spider-Man villains, he's just getting beaten up left, right and centre, and it's pretty much what you want from most Spider-Man comics. I'm not going to say it's thought provoking or anything like that, but I'm not going to lie, what I did read I did enjoy. And the complete collection, which I was planning on getting seems to have already gone out of print so I just wish they'd give me like a complete hardcover of it and I'll just be happy then. Well sort of happy, you know I like to complain. Coming in at number 8 I've got Captain America by Mark Grunewald. This to me sounds like the equivalent of the Peter David run on Hulk. It's that one seminal long strand title that's just gone on for years and it just seems to always hit continuous high points. It was crossing over from that 80s era into that 90s, you had such great storytelling throughout the years like there was the bit where he became the captain and there was the US agent storyline, there was also the cat wolf which, you know, admittedly I enjoyed. But this seems to be getting a lot of attention in epic collections but I'd really like it in about three or maybe even four just thick omnibuses. Captain America's a great character to me, I love the Mark Wade run, I love the half of Captain America by Ed Brubaker that I've read so far. So for me I'd pretty much be happy with any other Captain America omnibuses that they give us. I haven't even read all of this, I just know about the storylines that I've told you before, but if I remember correctly I think this was like 140 issues. And to me, especially in the 90s, he must have been doing some something right and I think to honour his legacy because he did unfortunately pass a few years ago I think it'd be great if the main one that he had finally got that omnibus treatment. Number seven and again I don't even know how many omnibuses this would be but I want a complete Dan Slot run of Spider-Man. Sure all of this near enough 10 year run isn't perfect but at the time when I was reading Gauntlet that was at the time when Dan Slot was mainly steering the majority of the Spider-Man books. People were coming in here and there to do different arcs but it was mainly him so I've read so many bits and pieces of this over the years. I've read some of Brand New Day, I've read some of Big Time, I've read all the Superior Spider-Man but I still haven't had a chance to read Spider-Man worldwide. But now that his run is done and we know exactly what we're looking at, I think it'd be great if they just continued with the momentum that they've got from the JMS Spider-Man omnibuses and just went for it with the Dan Slott run. To make it easier, yeah, they probably would just have to do it based on the arcs rather than doing like a Dan Slott Spider-Man omnibus volume 10. But that's cool with me, if you want to start with 
a brand new day, great. If you then want to go into big time, I'm down for that as well. But again, similar with what I said with X-Men, it seems like they're forgetting a lot about the Spider-Man continuity of the last 20 years. And this is the same argument that I've had for a lot of this, but a lot of people are getting nostalgic for these runs now. I know a lot of people that came into Spider-Man because of Dan Slott. So why not let us get nostalgic? Why not print these omnibuses and let us just read and see if it was as good as we remember it? But I'm not going to lie, with this selection, I feel like I'd need an entire Calyx just for it. Coming in at number six, I've got Venom by Rick Remender. But I do not want this as a Ven Omnibus Volume 4. I haven't really been buying the Ven Omnibuses, it just hasn't been something that's appealed to me. It seems like a bit of a mismatch of stories, especially at a time when it seems like they didn't know what they were doing with the character and they were just figuring out where he fits. However, I've read the Flash Thompson portion of this run. I'd never read the Eddie Brock bit before, but I just really want to read the rest of this. Rick Remender is one of those writers that if I see his name on a book, I'm just going to buy it and kind of guarantee myself that I'm going to enjoy it. And I do think it's a shame that his run on Venom hasn't been collected yet in Omnibus. It's quite difficult to get the complete collections as well and I think that Marvel should be wise and they should always have a way of getting some of their more popular runs. So I feel like every day that they haven't published this Omnibus is them just leaving money on the table. Number five, and I'm not sure if this counts as cheating again, but I have got X-Men for the Mutants. I used to have that thick OHC that they printed and I think it was in like 2009, but that time I wasn't really into me X-Men. This story didn't really make a lot of sense to me, so I sold it in a similar way to what I did with Thor by J. Michael Straczynski. However, I think what they should do with this is similar to what they did with Mutant Massacre. They should bring it out again, put that Omnibus logo on it, so that it just fits in line with the rest of the books that we've already got. As well, I've heard this get some high, high praise, and I just wish that I hadn't have sold it as early as I did, mainly because of how much it goes for now, but I'd really like to get invested in it now that I know a lot more about the X-Men, and I think I'd enjoy this story much more. As well, I was tempted to put Inferno on this list, because I think they could do the same thing there. They could also include the prelude, so it's just in one book, so that people don't have to hunt for two whales at the same time. But I'm not going to lie, I do actually have high hopes for this one, especially since he did it with Mutant Massacre, and I just hope it's like next year or so that this actually gets solicited. Number four, and it's the last time he's going to appeal on this list, but I've got Daredevil by Anna Chetty. This is one of those runs that seems to have gained popularity in the recent years. It is unfortunate that this was the run that had to follow after Frank Miller left, but from what I've heard, there's a lot of great storytelling in here. I think I've read the last rights part of this, I think that's the one that it was called, and I did enjoy that, but for me, I just see a massive gap in Daredevil Omnibus collecting here, and I think it deserves its place because I feel like at the minute it's just the orphan child that just happened to unfortunately fall between the run from Frank Miller and then the eventual run by Brian Michael Bendis. And as well, I'm not sure about anybody else, but I just really like 80s and 90s comics, and I also really like Daredevil, so if you put them two together, it sounds like a recipe for success from me. My number three pick is going to be House of M. Now at the risk of losing subscribers and the respect of anybody watching this video, I absolutely love comic events. I'm not even sure why, because they're often overly complicated, delayed, have far too many tie-ins, and are very rarely actually that good when you read them a few years later. I'm not sure why, but there is just something about a major comic crossover happening that I just get excited about. And the one that's been stuck in my mind for years and years on end is House of M. And a lot of the books that I read even now, is like a lot of the X-Men books are still reeling from what actually happened in that crossover. But the oversized hardcovers of this are hard to come by, and I think there was four of them, and I just think it'd be great if we finally had one all-in-one omnibus so that we can just read this story beginning to end. And it was actually one of those events that I remember enjoying at the time, even though I wasn't reading it in single issues and it was a few years later. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Marvel hasn't published this yet, especially with the popularity of Scarlet Witch and the fact that the X-Men are now back in the MCU. Now we're on to the final two. These are the big ones, the ones that I really want, the ones that I lose sleep over because of the fact that they aren't already on my shelf. And coming in second place and getting that silver medal is, of course, Thor by Jason Aaron. I read the beginning issues of this, I read the God Killer arc, but that was when I was phasing out of reading single issues. I was at uni and I just didn't really have the time for it, but I really enjoyed what I read of this. And I knew from those early issues that this was going to be something special, so I didn't bother buying the paperbacks. I haven't brought the oversized hardcovers just yet, because I have to believe at the bottom of my heart that Marvel must know that this is a recipe to print money if they give us this arc in the omnibus format. To me, I think they're using the War of Realms omnibus later this year is sort of like a test to see if people will buy that, to see if there's still that interest in the Jason Aaron omnibus, which admittedly is the sole reason why I've brought it, because there's no point me reading that unless you give us the rest of the storyline. It's kind of baffling that they haven't done this already, because especially with the solicitation of the Cosmic Universe by Donny Cates, you can obviously see that they're already willing to publish an omnibus even if the series hasn't necessarily finished yet. Whereas with this, it has now finished. It's already had an event that is going to get an omnibus before the actual main series that caused that omnibus to happen. It's just crazy to me, but 
I've already got the JMS Omnibus, I've got the Dan Jurgens run, I've got the Walter Simonson run, but the one thing that feels missing in my collection is a Jason Aaron book. I really want this and I'll be surprised if we get to the end of 2021 and not hear anything about this book coming out yet. Actually, I won't be surprised, I won't be mad, I'll just be disappointed in your Marvel. And the number one pick for the Marvel Omnibus that I want more than any other, the one that I would wish for if I had a monkey's paw, is of course gonna be it's an America Omnibus. I'm kidding, of course, it's gonna be Iron Man by Matt Fraction. I love this, actually this makes me angry. Stop the music. Marvel. What are you playing at? This is Iron Man, one of the most high profile characters you have at the moment thanks to the MCU. This is Matt Fraction, a guy who's gone on to work on stuff like Hawkeye that was massively praised, and a ton of books at Image. This was actually the story that you published so that if anybody wanted to get into comics as a result of watching the Iron Man film, they'd have something new to go to. And in the past, I brought that first oversized hardcover that you missed correctly labelled as an omnibus. I brought the second volume of that because I thought you were going to continue with it, and then you didn't. And I brought the complete collection of this because foolish me I thought the word complete meant that you were going to finish it off but this is now the second time that you've just completely abandoned this series despite the fact that it's quite well loved it's a high profile character it's a decent writer and you've never really put this in an available format so as much as I want this story I think I want this begrudgingly I want this just so that Marvel finally has to finish Iron Man by Matt Fraction in some kind of completed collection but yeah I loved a ton of this story I loved how it sort of interacted with events such as Civil War and stuff like that but it just kind of like skirted around them so this does take place pretty much straight after the civil war actually happened and i absolutely love the storyline that was iron man disassembled or maybe it was called stark disassembled but i just remember absolutely loving this and the art was great it was salvador la roca who then went on to do star wars but matt fraction in the early 2010s actually had a lot to do with some of the events that were going on across marvel so the series that benefited the most from stuff like fear itself was the one that matt fraction was still writing which was iron man and i've said it for x-men i've said it for spider-man as well but they haven't really given a lot of publicity to a lot of the modern runs of Iron Man that there's been. The best one without question for me was definitely Matt Fraction's I think it's ridiculous that we haven't actually had this in some kind of easy to get format just yet. I'm hoping Marvel realises that and that they've got a plan to bring this out. I would be so happy if they published this and if I got one I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if it had a DC logo with the way that this series is being handled. But yeah that's my list. My voice is kind of going now but I hope you enjoyed this and comment below with the Marvel Omnibus that you want to see the most get published. And if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you didn't like this video why did you get this far? Please subscribe if you haven't already and remember to click that bell notification and share it with any friends or share it with any groups. As soon as we get to 500 subscribers, I'm going to do a live stream with you. You can ask me whatever you want. And as well, I'm just going to mention this here. I don't know whether to try and do some kind of fundraising when I'm in that live stream. I don't really know if that would work well. If anybody's got any ideas, that would be great. But you know, obviously I'm the mad dog, so I'd like to kind of raise money so that I can give it to a dog shelter or something like that, or to help dogs or cats in need. Let me know if you've got any ideas of how I can do that. I'm going to listen to them, but nothing set in stone just yet. Because admittedly, we're a long way from 500 subscribers so I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. But as always thank you for watching this video and just remember to stay safe, keep reading and keep barking all you mad dogs and I'll see you at the next video.